So now I'm going to go over 12 and 16 from the Unit 6 project progress track because I think that's what it meant was meant by those. So this was just a heating curve question. You do not need to use MCAT. So there are two parts to this. The first one is a heating curve, which hopefully you remember from first year, um, but we also did review it already this year, I believe. Um, you have solid here, and then the solid melting, so turning into liquid. Then you have the liquid heating up here, and then the liquid turning into gas, so the liquid is evaporating, and then here all of it is gas. So this question is asking you, what transition is happening here, and how many kilojoules do we need to make it happen based on the graph? So you need to first look at this and tell me what phase is this first box. This first box is the liquid phase because they're not all touching directly, but they're also not filling up the whole box. This is the gas phase because they're not touching and filling up the entire box. Okay, solid would look like this. All right, so we know it's not solid. So then we go back to our graph and we say, okay, how much energy is needed to go from to turn the liquid into gas? That is this horizontal part right here, liquid to gas. So 30, 128. Okay. 128 minus 30 is about 98. However, I'm not quite done yet because this is a heating curve for one mole of Na, and they're asking for the change in heat one half a mole undergoes the transition. So you don't want to say 98, you do want to say 49. Okay, so that means B must be the answer. Um, if you want to take a look at these other things, approximately 13, increase in potential energy. No, we're changing the potential energy, but that's not how we get the heat absorbed. Also, 13 makes no sense. 98 kilojoules are released. Nope, we have to absorb them to go from liquid to gas. We have to absorb them, excuse me. Have to absorb them to go from liquid to gas. And 120 are released. Nope, we have to absorb them to go from liquid to gas. So it has to be either A or B. My guess is the 13 might be what they, no, I don't know where the 13 comes from. Um, but it definitely should be B. And the last one we're going to take a look at is question 16. This was a really good one. Okay. So the question here is, why can't I just use delta H equals and then figure it out based on the um, double bonded O? Here's why this question is being asked, okay? Ozone is O3. And it has a resonance structure. Okay, so if you do out the structural formula for ozone, you have this or this. So the reason they're asking you this question is because they want to know what is the average bond enthalpy in ozone. Because you're not going to say it's 150. And you're not going to say it's 500. You're not going to just subtract and divide by 2 or whatever. What you are going to do is use this number. So the, re the question was, why can't I just do... Let me just pull up the question for myself. Why can't I just do 3 times 500 minus 4 times 500 is delta H? Because you already have delta H. 3 times 500 minus 4 times 500 isn't negative 300. Okay, so we know that's not right. 
You also can't do this because of the resonance structure. You don't know what, oops, it. you don't know what part, like you, you don't have anything in this table about a resonance structure, about something that's partly double and partly single, okay? If you don't have that, like remember when we went through bond order and all that stuff, you don't have that information here, okay? You are, however, going to use the delta H formula. So you are going to do delta H is equal to Let me just, I should have made that a little. Okay. And then you're going to do the negative products plus the reactants. Okay, we are looking for this. So I'm going to do negative 300 is our delta H, which I get from right here. The products for O2 looks like that, and we have three of them. So we're going to do for the products 3 times 500. For the reactants, we have four situations. 4 OO bonds, but we don't know if those are single or double because of that re re resonance. So that's what we're trying to figure out. So you can do 4 times X, and in this case, X is going to be the bond enthalpy for O3. Okay, so the idea behind it is that in a resonance structure, all the bonds will have the same bond enthalpy, just like they'll have the same bond order. They have the same bond enthalpy, but we don't know what it is because it's not in the chart. There's nothing in the chart for resonance. So what you have to do is solve. So if we solve this, we get 1,500 plus okay, minus 300, so we get 1,200 is equal to 4x. So x is 300. That is going to be the bond enthalpy of O3. So that's how we get C. And the reason, again, it is not that straightforward is because we do not have all double bonds in O3. Okay, if you look at the question document and it says 3 times 500, which is coming from the O2, three of them, that makes sense, and 4 times 500, that, that assumes that ozone has two double bonds, and it's a resonance structure with one double and one single. Okay, so I think that answers the question. Um, but again, if any of these don't make sense, just make a comment on Classroom, and I will try to put it in a different way or anything like that.